Hi, it is Allison of The Little Tiny and She Blogs, SheBlogs.com. Today I am going to be showing you how to make this awesome throwback craft, these macrame bracelets. I've added some gold and some copper beads to mine. You could add whatever sort of charming details you wanted to yours. Uh, I call this a throwback craft because I used to do it, honestly, when I was in fourth, fifth grade. Um, I think these are really fun. They have the same charm of friendship bracelets, but they take about a fifth of the time. I made all of these five bracelets with beads while watching Empire Records. Uh, I think the reason we did friendship bracelets when we were 10, 11, 12 is because we didn't have driver's licenses and we had a lot more time <clears throat> on our hands. These are a lot faster and I think that you're going to love them. You could do it with lots of different materials. You could do it with lanyard or boondoggle, that plasticky type stuff. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you the materials that I've been using that I think will work really well. Uh, right here we have just your good old fashioned ball of hemp. And you know you're getting the good stuff when you just kind of take a big inhale of that hemp and it has that good sticky smell. Um, you can do that if you want to know if you're getting hemp or twine. I like hemp because it doesn't have um, as much fraying of the string. This is a thin hemp. that It also comes in a little bit thicker. Right here I also have some dyed hemp twine. I actually bought this um, from Joann's in a, in a grab bag. Uh, it came with like five or six colors and it was pretty inexpensive. I also to experiment later bought some of this cord. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. I don't know if it's picking that up. But um, I think something like that would look really pretty. Maybe a little more feminine. Um, then you're also going to want some beads. Uh, beads like this will work. I tried them. Uh, I prefer the gold with a little bit of bling. Um, the one thing, no matter what kind of bead you use, is you want to make sure that the hole is going to be big enough to fit through at least one strand of whatever twine you decide to use. Ideally, it would fit through two, but I didn't like the bulk of the beads, so I found a way to make it work with one. The other thing you're going to need is a lobster clasp. Um, I really like lobster clasps. I think that they are the classiest of the simple clasp. You can also sing rock lobster if you wanted to, but you don't have to, I guess. And um, you're going to need some scissors. But that's it. So this is kind of a fun craft you could do on a road trip as well. So let's get started and learn how to macrame. First you want to measure out your thread. So here I have the basic hemp and or twine, whatever it is you want to use, you follow your heart and you want to measure hollow oh, around your wrist. And then I like to leave an additional, let's call it four inches. You just don't want to be left with too little twine. You don't want to waste your hemp, but you don't want to be left with too little at the end. You'll just be cursing my name. So you have your length. If you wanted to do a necklace or an anklet, make one for your baby, whatever you wanted to do. And then you're going to go ahead and double it and then snip that off. And then releasing it again so it's its full double length, you're going to measure three. You're going to need two cords to do this braid it, and it turns into four. You're going to go one, two, rocket science crafting right here, three, and you don't really need it, but sometimes I add just a whoop, little bit for good measure there. And then if you want to come on over here, I'll show you how to get this little sucker started. You're going to want to double your short thread and double your long thread. I remember doing this on an airplane when I was like 10 and all these grandmas were like, you know how to macrame? And I felt really cool when actually I was probably a really huge dork. So I've put together the two top folds and so you can see I've got my short piece and my long piece. And I'm just going to make a simple square knot. There are lots of ways to start um, a macrame bracelet. The, a traditional one, if you're anchoring it to something, is to do what they refer to in the bows as a lark's knot. Um, I am consciously choosing not to do one of those, not because I don't know how, but because what I think I did one of the not square knots there, but 
either one's gonna work. Um, I'm consciously choosing to do this because, well, as you can see on my wrist full of bracelets right here, I'm using this loop that we started with as the end of the clasp. That way we're just using our lobster clasp and our twine. Okay, to start your basic knot, you're gonna be working, let's get it flat here so you guys can really see what's happening. We're gonna be working with the two shorter ones in the center. So if you wanna show them how there's two shorter ones in the center, yeah. And then your two longer ones, this is my adorable husband is filming. Thank you, sweetheart, I love you. And you're gonna keep your long ones on either side. One thing you wanna do is you wanna take care and make sure to keep these center ones flat. You don't wanna twist them and get them all skiwampus because that's not pretty crafting. What you're gonna wanna do, and this is just like a friendship braid kind of, is you're gonna make a P, P, -p, -p perfect, and then you're gonna make a four. So you're making your P and then your four. You take your four back behind your doubles, see how I took it back behind there, and pull it through the front of my P. I'm gonna do a few of these, and then you just, you could anchor this to something if you want. I am so crazy, I'm not going to. I am just pulling this tight and pushing it up towards and giving it a nice tight thing. I'm gonna do one more. So now I'm, and you're gonna switch back and forth each time. If you always start it on your right side or always start it on your left side, you're gonna get one of those twisty ones, one of those Chinese staircase or a spiral. So this time I'm starting on my left side, so I'm gonna make my four, I'm gonna make my P, I'm gonna bring it back behind. So this second one is coming back up through that other side, and you're gonna pull that tight. Now when I craft, it's kind of like a release. I don't like to sit here focusing, oh, did I do right, did I do left? Do not stress out, I have a trick. So if we get really close, see how it's made almost like a little loop right there? That little loop, as opposed to the other side where our string is coming out to the side, that little loop is always gonna indicate which side you're starting on. So if you see the loop, that means you're gonna start on that side. So I'm gonna just do another one. I'm gonna walk it through it one more time. We're gonna see our loop. That indicates which side we start on. We're starting on my left side. I'm gonna make my four or my half circle, whatever shape you wanna envision that's gonna help you. I'm bringing it on top of the double thread and then I'm working from the front to make my P, bringing it on top of this one that's sticking out and then I'm bringing it up and through that other side. And then I'm just, as you can see, I'm just working it. Now, when you pull these tight, you could pull really, really tight and make a really tight looking one. You could keep them kind of, kind of loose. I prefer to keep them moderately tight. As you can see here, these ones are pretty tight, but if you pull at different, um, if you give it different pressure each time, it's gonna create a wavy, kind of thing and you want a nice straight line. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. You can grab your hemp and follow along. And as you can see this is why this is a, a pretty awesome craft just to take along with you if you like to keep your hands busy. Such I like to keep my hands pretty busy otherwise I go a little crazy. And you can just see how I'm doing those. Okay, let's add a bead. Traditionally, in macrame, you add a bead to both of these center pieces, which again, we're aiming to keep nice and flat. What I'm going to do, because I am one crazy crafty lady, is I'm gonna add a bead to just one thread. Let's see, I'm glad that happened. It was too thick, let's try the other thread. Okay, now see, it's a little bit of a tight pull right there, but I didn't want a huge bulky bead, uh-oh. 
This is all planned so that you guys can see how to troubleshoot. <laughs> it started to kind of pull on like one measure of the twine, but not both of them. So see how I'm just kind of twisting? And then I'm going to grab both and it fit through. So it was a tight squeeze, but um, the colored twine is a little bit thinner. Okay, so I strung my bead all the way on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this bead on top. I don't want my hemp twine on top of it like that. So I'm going to show you. Actually, I have an example right here to show you. I have these nice copper beads. And if you flip it over, you can see that back, that middle twine thread, that second one that we didn't loop on the bead. I have it just kind of strung along the back there. So there's very definitely a front and a back. If you had... um beads with bigger holes, then you wouldn't have to worry about this. So um, let's get in a little bit closer. So you can see I know which side to start on. I'm going to st start on that side with the loop. And I'm going to make my, um, my macrame braid. So I'm going to make my, in this case, my four, my half circle on top of the thread. I'm going to make my second half circle on top of the thread and then bring that second one up back through and then as you do this just take care to keep that second thread behind and just kind of pull tight now this one actually worked out really well it's not because I'm totally pro I mean it kind of is but this this twine is actually nicer to work with than that that dyed stuff lots of times when you're working uh, with that dyed stuff your little loops can go skiwampus like that. Um, if they do, just kind of wiggle it around and we're gonna do two braids in between each bead. So I can see where my little loop is. I know to start on this side. Again, it seems so obvious because I just did it on the other side, but if you're not really paying attention, um, it's a great way to just keep track of it. And there we go, we added a bead. Hip, hip, huzzah. Let's add one more. And then I'll show you how to finish off your bracelet. Another good reason to add a little bit of extra when you're making this sucker is because look how I'm snipping a little bit to get a, a clean edge right there. And I know to start on my left side with my braid because that's where my little latch is. I don't know if that's some sort of technical um, advanced technique. It's something I've just always, I taught myself when I was a wee crafter to do. Um, and we make our second one, pull it nice and tight, and then I just kind of shift it to try to keep it going straight. All right, let's add our clasp. Here I have a finished bracelet, which is ready for a clasp. I'm going to grab my lobster clasps. They come in different sizes. I suggest a larger one because it's going to make for easier, um, easier threading. And I'm just going to put it through. Okay. I've decided to put it through just one of my center uh, threads right here. Honestly, I think that every time I do this, I put it on a different thread. <laughs> if you put it on an edge thread, it's just going to have your uh, clasp be closer to the edge. So you take your, see how it's just in the center there, hooked on? And we're going to do a square knot. Again, there's lots of ways to close these off. I'm just tying, I just took two sides, a short and a long, a short and a long, doing a knot, pulling it really tight. And then I like to snip. I like to leave a little. I like the fringe. I'm a fringy lady. And there is a completed bracelet. And then when you attach it on your wrist, uh, this one, there we go, get rid of its little thing it came with. Uh, you just whoop, and it attaches just like that. So I hope that you uh, learned something. If you have any questions or if something wasn't clear, please let me know um, at thelittletinyshop at gmail.com or go ahead, hop on, leave a comment on the blog and I will help you out. And thank you so much. Happy crafting.